Okay, I'm back on the other side of the canoe now. We're doing the same procedure. Same thing. Always the same thing. Sand, make sure it's clean, sand it up, and then apply resin. And then apply cloth. Then apply more resin. Smear it around with your finger, with your glove finger. You know, the doctor is in, okay? Alright. We're going to take, get rid of the popsicle stick. Well, you got to eat a lot of popsicles if you're in this business. We take the foam brush, not my first choice, as I said, in another cut, just because I like bristle brushes better. But I'm out in the woods, and foam brush is what we're going to use. It applies, but it, uh, it has some, some issues. So we're going to apply resin. Notice how we get our color back. You get rid of the white and you get the nice dark color. It's magical. And you apply the resin liberally. Liberal in the sense of the word regarding resin. And I've got two pieces of Kev Kevlar that we're going to overlap because this side actually had a little bit more stress to it than the other. Got to find my spot on the other side. We're going to lay that in there. Spread it out. I'm going to take this side and do the same. It's just a little bit. I got about a half an inch overlap right there. Right in that area. With Saurus River canoes they use full sheet construction. There's no splicing like you just saw me do. Splicing is weaker from a standpoint of building the canoe. It's not as quality of a canoe if you don't use full sheets and you scarf a whole bunch of pieces. See, I just scarfed that together. But, for repair work, it does just fine. We're going to soak this up with resin. Watch the fuzzies. The reason you use Kevlar cloth in canoe construction is because it's very, very strong relative to its weight. In order for fiberglass to have the same strength, you need many layers of fiberglass. From a repair standpoint, fiberglass is fine. But a fiberglass canoe doesn't compare to a Kevlar canoe. It can in strength, but you need many more layers. And when you add a little more layers, you add weight. Now we take this piece, which is the fiberglass layer, we're going to set that over the top. And look at where we're going here. Lay it down, stick it into the resin we did. Make sure we cover up all the Kevlar that we did and that we put down. Because fiberglass actually resins out a little nicer. And again, we're going just along the top, tops of the ribs. I don't know if you notice, there's a tremendous amount of precise measurements that are going on with this. Re-wet it out. The whole paper mache thing. Think of it as paper mache with epoxy as opposed to starch. If you give this to kindergartners, it would be a whole new adventure. Do they do paper mache anymore? It's probably illegal. The kids get too messy. We did it when I was in school. Alright, just keep applying resin. And it's just more of the same. And then we squish it out with the sponge because they don't have a brush, but this carries a lot of stuff, a lot of resin, a lot of goo. We're applying goo. Now you can get really fussy about this, but you're not going to gain a heck of a lot on it because it's, it's still just it's fibers. For this kind of stuff, repair work, if everything isn't lined up absolutely perfectly, it's not going to be the end of the world. We're not talking plumbing and we're not talking house wiring. We're talking about laminating down a piece of fiberglass over a chunk of Kevlar. That's all there is to it. The 
it's not difficult it's not even scary I admit though the first time I did it I was a little scared I was going holy buckets can I do this yeah it's pretty easy and you can even move it around like I'm doing here I'm moving that fiberglass up a little bit because it'd be better if it was closer up the sides and if you notice the I don't know if you can tell or not but the, the Kevlar layer is not moving it's pretty well welded down so we got the two to slide over each other just to straighten it out make it all look pretty and with that we set this aside and we do the whole smeary finger thing do it kind of gently make sure you get epoxy resin in all the important spots so you don't have any air bubbles and you don't want pools of it if possible too there's one little piece here I'm just letting it stick I doubt that you can see it on the camera there's one hair sticking out I'm not wetting it out uh, later on I'm gonna come with my pocket knife and I'm gonna cut it off because that way I don't have to dirty up my scissors this will make the canoe incredibly tough at this spot and much more resilient than it already is. We're kind of there. Now what you can do if you want to get fussy is you can take a cloth and run around the edge and just kind of clean up the, uh, the edge of the resin. Or you can take your finger and smear it around nicely too like I'm doing over here. That's all you got to do. Now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to move the sandpaper and touch up this spot right here. I worked on a few patches exactly the same principle and process as what you just witnessed. The same technique, identical, absolutely not different. And I did it here over the ribs because there are a few ribs with cracks in them. I'm probably going to move out of your line of sight here, but you'll hear me talking. I'm going to pick up a little bit of resin with my finger and apply. What happened was I did a patch, and the patch ended up having the fiberglass floating in the, in the resin. And when it floated in the resin, it ended up making a sharp edge where you had the raggedy edge of the fiberglass. And right now what I'm doing is I took a pocket knife and cut all those sharp edges off, and I'm going to fill in these little spots here right around the edge where I touched it with a pocket knife so it's all shiny and new looking. And I put a little bit of resin on there, it'll harden smooth, and I'm good to go. And that's pretty much it. Come back, it doesn't hurt to come back and check your work. In fact, I recommend that with everything from accounting to Kevlar Canoe Repair, check your work. Or if you're plumbing a house and you're soldering copper pipes, stick around for an hour. Make sure, just hang out there and smell the air. Because if you're working with copper, you never know. That's my plumbing lesson for the day. For the Kevlar thing, you want to just come back and make sure everything's down in good shape. And then you can safely walk away from it, but I'd still come back and check. All right. And that's all she wrote. We're going to let this cure, and this canoe will be ready to uh, pretty much rock and roll. Except for I got to do some skid plate repair on that, and uh, you may see me on this one or some other canoe down the road.